all day and I'm going to come to you with a brief study on how to improve your prayer life. Five ways to improve your prayer life. And we'll be looking at Psalm 65 verses 1 through 5. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. It says, There will be silence before you and praise in Zion, O God. And to you the vow will be performed. To you who hear prayer, to you all men come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you forgive them. How blessed is the one whom you choose and bring near to you. To dwell in your courts, we will be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us in righteousness, O God of our salvation. So that's one through five, the first part of five. Okay, five things. You know, usually we think that praying means coming with lots and lots of words. And, and a lot of people struggle with praying in public because they feel like they're not saying the right words. They feel like they don't have these big drawn out, uh, a, a drawn out vocabulary and they feel inadequate. But effective prayer does not mean having lots of words. In fact, in this psalm, it tells us that the first thing that we should do is to be silent before the Lord. It says there will be silence before you. Um, so it's not coming with lots of words. It's first coming into God's presence with silence, recognizing who he is, learning to hear his voice before he hears ours. And, 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 and what that also means is meditation in the word of God, going to God's word, being silent, taking in his truth and hearing from him first. Um, years ago, my sister had a friend that would call her and a lot of times I would answer the phone and as soon as I said, hello, she was off and running and she would just start talking and talking and talking and not even wait until my sister came on the line. She, our voices sounded alike. So she assumed that I was my sister and she would tell me all kinds of stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't my sister. It was me. And she didn't wait to even know who she was talking to. So number one is we should be silent before the Lord and acknowledge him and know who we are talking to. The next one, it says there and praise in Zion, O oh God. So the next thing that we should do before coming with our requests, before coming with, with our needs, we should acknowledge him and praise him. There should be Praise in Zion, the place of God. And he is God. He created us. We didn't make ourselves. And no matter what's going on here on earth, he is always worthy of praise. Whether you're having a bad day or not, whether you're going through different circumstances or not, in heaven, God is always worthy of praise. And so as we come before him, we should acknowledge him and give him the praise that he is worthy of. So first, come before him with silence. Next, come before him with praise. The next one, it says there, uh, to you who hear, oh, backing up, and to you the vow will be performed. To you who hear all, uh, to you who hear prayer, to you all men come. So the next thing is obedience. The psalmist says here that your vow will be performed. Like whatever you, you're, you're, you've promised him, whatever he is requiring of you, be obedient to him. In John chapter 5, um, sorry, John chapter 15, the Lord tells us to abide in him. That means to remain, to stay in him. And it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, and whatever you wish, it will be done for you. John 15, 7. So as we stay in obedience to God, we stay mm -hmm. uh, and we abide in his word. That's a key for, um, for having our requests answered. Obedience. Okay. It would be like, um, let me just give you a little example. 
uh, of a, a husband. Let's say that all day long he has ignored his wife. He's been rude. He's been selfish. Um, he's not acknowledged her at all. Just been thinking about himself. And then at night time when, you know, it's time to go to sleep, he wants to have special bedroom favors when he has ignored her all day. Well, on the other hand, if a man attends to his wife and he helps her wash, wash his dishes, he listens to her, he's attentive to her, it might be far different for him when he wants favors in the bedroom. And the same way, we can't come and just think, oh God, I, it doesn't matter how I act. It doesn't matter if I disobey you. If it does, it doesn't matter if I ignore you all day. When I want something done, boom, rub the, mat, the lamp like a magic genie and poof, Lord, you need to respond. It doesn't work that way. God wants us to be obedient to him and obedience brings us favor before the Lord. A.W. Tozer said this, and if you ever get a chance to read his read as any of his writings, he's an awesome, awesome uh, man of God. Uh, A.W. Tozer says, prayer at its best is expression of the total life. All things else being equal, our prayers are only as powerful as our lives. We pray only as well as we live. So if we live well, and that means walking in obedience, then our prayer life is going to be much more powerful. Number four, um, knowing that our sins are forgiven. And verse 3, 65, 3, it says, Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you forgive them. This isn't just asking for forgiveness, but it's also accepting that he has forgiven us. Uh, I don't know about you, but I know that I went through a time in my life where I was always asking God to forgive me for the same thing. And somehow I could not accept forgiving uh, the forgiveness of God. And I didn't forgive myself. And that was a hindrance. That was an obstacle to me in my spiritual walk. But 1 John 1, 9 tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. And in this psalm, the, the psalmist acknowledges, you forgive my iniquities, you forgive my transgressions. When we have uh, uh, trespassed God's boundaries and God's laws, but God forgives him. So the psalmist goes into prayer knowing, Lord, I'm forgiven. You've already forgiven me and I accept that forgiveness, that makes a huge difference when we approach his throne knowing that we're cleansed. Because when we're feeling guilty, chances are we're not going to really want to approach God. The enemy is going to tell us that we don't deserve to go before God. And, and our guilt and shame will keep us from drawing into the Lord, for, for pressing in, for even asking petitions because we just won't feel worthy. But it's not about what we feel. It's about what is written in the word of God. And this psalmist, he acknowledges, he says, you know, Lord, I can come before you because you already forgave my sin. So, you know, just thank God that he is a God that forgives us. And then number five, come before him in prayer with expectations. The book of James says that if anyone wants wisdom, let him ask of God with faith, not doubting, because the doubting person will not receive. And in the same way, when we approach the throne of God, we need to do it with a heart of expectation. Our Father wants us to come before Him. Our Father says, Ask that you might receive, that your joy might be full. So he wants us to come in prayer before him. He wants us to come with a heart of expectation. And it says there in verse 4, 65, 4, how blessed is the one whom you choose and bring near to you. And you know the best the best uh, advantage of prayer is not what we get, the things that we get, but that we get God himself. There's no greater blessing than to just draw close to the Lord and be in a deeper commitment and relationship with him. That is the best 
blessing of all. And so he says there, you know, how blessed is that person that you bring near to dwell in your courts. We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house. God wants to satisfy our souls with his goodness. And then anything he adds on top of it is just like the mm -hmm. cherry on the top of the cake and the awesome deeds in your righteousness. So these are the five things that can improve your prayer life. Number one, start with silence. Acknowledge who he is. Get in his word and hear what he has to say before you start like a chatty Kathy and go with your list. Number two, praise. Acknowledge that he is a great and mighty God and he is worthy of praise at all time. Number three, live a life of obedience to him. Obedience opens doors to his favor. Number four, acknowledge your sin, but accept his forgiveness. Acknowledge that he's already forgiven you and we are clean by the word that he's spoken to us. And finally, number five, mm -hmm. come with a heart of expectation. Come knowing that you're going to receive something from God. You're going to walk away not the same, but being blessed by his presence and by his presence. So both presence, the presence of God, and the presence, the gifts that he gives you. So remember these five things, and may they help you to uh, improve your prayer life and improve your communication with God. God bless you all.